Okay, uh, these are Nigerians expressing divergent views, and I want to believe that uh, the two guests I have also took time to listen to them. Uh, Mr. Yiko Dumaki, if you're still there, I, I don't know whether you listen to what Nigerians had to say. Uh, they seem to be unanimous, except for one or two, who felt uh, was the guarantee that we are not going to have another episode in days to come. Uh, uh, well, you see, the situation we are with Nigeria today now is so, is so confusing that like even for the best in, intelligent people, things can confuse you. But you can see that the emotional response there, or that about uh, parents losing children and having them back, everybody will happy about that. But for those who can think outside the box for to ask critical questions at this stage. Uh, this is a country that was killing answers for testers which weeks ago. Why is it that our security forces cannot go after the abductor girls this girl? There's there's some connections that we may not understand, that we may not know. And in the final analysis, what this suggests is a, a serious conspiracy theory, and that we have been taken for fools as a people. But the truth will come out someday, no matter how long it takes. But the way things are happening, the speedy way at which uh, this event of voting clearly show that some that we know a lot of drama has been passed into this, uh, and that we are deeply emotional people. Oh, we'll be happy with the boys are back and the rest. How uh, bad they come back when when they say come now, uh, come now, sorry, who's my friend was. Uh, was asked, who are the people who kidnapped this boy? Well, I will give them. Say, I was, I will have to ask the top party. That says you a lot. Okay. Let me, I will come back to you. There is something I, I would like to see clarity on. But let me ask Dixon first. Please, uh, I would like to put it into perspective. If you watch the video released uh, earlier yesterday, before we now heard the news of... Uh, a release, a rescue. I, I'm still confused about the right word to use as we seek more answers. Now, the, 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 it was more of the vigilantes. It was more of let the vigilantes stay away from them. And these vigilantes are more of the houses. And the Mieti Allah has to do with the Fulani. So we, we are looking at a situation where it was more of the prevalent situation in Northwest and not necessarily the Boko Haram uh, 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 fight in the Northeast. So don't you think Mieti Allah has a bigger stake to come to this rescue? Because I remember a lot of Nigerians are saying, whichever way, however this rescue will be done, the government should explore all avenues. Isn't that the case? Dixon. Is it my question? Yes, sir. It is your uh, question. If you ask, if you ask me, uh, Mr. Kayode, you see, we need to understand something very clearly. Who are mediating Allah? Are they security agents? Are they constitutionally recognized as a security agent? Are they private security guards? Who are they? I need to understand that, first of all. Now, are you, okay, are you yes, asking when me? it comes to rescue mission, when it comes to rescue okay. mission, Kayode, uh, I have told you earlier on, when it comes to a case of kidnapping, it becomes a national matter, not an individual matter, not a private matter. When it comes to security issues, it becomes a national issue. And when it's a national issue, it has to deal with the national forces. That is how it is done all over the world. You can't give issues, national issues to private uh, security agents to go and uh, contain with this criminal element. Now, if Mieti Allah were actually sent or played a big role to rescue these guys, now, with what 
arms and ammunition do they use to rescue these guys? Is it with Kalashnikov? Is it with a, 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 a small and medium arms? Now, if they are using arms to go and rescue these guys, who licensed those arms to me Yeti Allah? Who authorized those arms to me Yeti Allah? These are questions that are calling for answers. Because we can't have, we can't have a group of uh, people uh, that sometimes throw around words of threats to our national security, then having them to go and rescue uh, these boys. Except I am not aware that uh, Miyeti Allah has been uh, uh, recognized and authorized by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria uh, to be a security uh, 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 line forces, which I am not aware. But if not, I think uh, the operation is illegal. The operation is uh, unprofessional, and the operation the operation is uncalled for. Uh, we must be very careful in the people we project in going after a kidnap cases uh, because you never can tell who and who is managing information. Okay, trust me. Um, and this was this will also bring up the conversation. And I, I think I've also listened to you on the issue of uh, vigilantes using the local security and solving this kind of problem. Now, while you are reviewing the operations of Mieti Allah, don't you think, because as far as the parents are concerned, their children have been found, don't you think it's time we explore the Amoteku, give it more legality, it's time we explore some regional security uh, uh, parity to solve some of these local problems? I agree with you, Mr. Kayode, because when you look at... Uh the ethnography of Nigeria. Nigeria uh, is a country sitting on uh, about 923,000 square kilometers. Uh, and Nigeria is a country with over 371 tribes, over 500 languages, and over 250 ethnic groups. This, uh, this is uh, a brief ethnography of Nigeria. And we have our policing system being centralized. That is an intentional operational error. Uh, I agree with you, uh, Amoteku and other uh, um, regional security forces needs to be activated with immediate alacrity uh, because uh, the national forces, I am so sure, not that they are not competent, because there's a difference between competency, capability, and political will, and uh, 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 manpower. The manpower is not there to govern Nigeria in a centralized system of policy. We need to decentralize the policy system. And uh, if Emiliati Allah uh, played a very good role to go and rescue these ladies, these uh, uh, beautiful, uh, great leaders of Nigerians, that were captured some few days back, that tells you that uh, the Amoteku will perform greatly in the Southwest and other regional forces, and they should be legalized. That is going to really mitigate the spread of insecurity. Okay, Mr. Yiko Dumake, I'm sure this is your forte, but should there be a bit of concern about how we endorse this uh, regional security arrangement? Um, you also saw what Amoteku did, was it in Ondo or Ekiti, one of these states, where they rescued a prominent person? No, you see, we, when, when we had the indigenous community policing, we know the impact it had. And uh, because we are closer to the community, we know the areas, they know the roots. They are much, much more better than single, single policy has failed in Nigeria. And the, earlier we start to use the indigenous approaches to augment and security measure, the better for us. Uh, if we will control and manage to ensure that we are uh, using the term of the low security arrangements across the country. There is no, no doubt today that the national security has gone through embarrassing. Uh, we vote millions, billions for security, but we have no value for it. And to begin to create value, we must begin to use how we have this available uh, indigenous measures to bolster the security system. Uh, there's quite a, quite a lot of value we can get, but we must manage them very well 
and ensure that we get maximum benefit to protect lives and, uh, of, our, of our property of our citizens. One of the things um, against some of these uh, um, security arrangements is the fear that politicians might curry these you know, operatives in their favor for political gains. And uh, while we are celebrating some of their um, heroic deeds, how do we ensure that the conversation can now continue about having um, regional security arrangements? Uh, well, even as of now, even for the federal policy now, is being abused left, right, and center. We should not, for fear of abuse, not the, not the right thing. What we should do is to ensure that we put measures in place to prevent abuses, either federal police or local police, to ensure that they are not abused. Uh, put those practical and effective measures that are necessary, not to say that because um, people are going to abuse, then we should not do what is right. That would be very wrong. Okay, because uh, I, I'm, I'm looking at um, uh, um, trying to justify some of the oppositions. I also look at the statement credited to Aisha Yasufu, who said that um, why should it be Mieti Allah arranging this kind of thing? But some people will want to remind us about how the Chibo girls were uh, negotiated in terms of, um, and equally the Dapchi girls, involving the uh, the Red Cross involving some negotiators outside the shores of this country. So if we have a clue on how we can get solution to a problem, why don't we explore it? And wasn't that the case with the government? No. In, in, in the case of, like I told you earlier, Ms. Yala has been recognized as the fourth like first terror group in Nigeria. So using a terror group is what we are talking about. It's not about, it's not about using indigenous services that we are against, but a terror group like Mekiela, in covering them with the church system by the government, is warning and it should give us warning. Yeah. That's that's. Uh, uh, I know. I know that statement you 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 insisted on. It's out there, but Nigerian government has not declared them a terror group. So, but Dixon, we're looking at solutions. I just gave an example of different way of negotiating. You remember the early days of Boko Haram? Um, there was some kind of negotiation to have them reintegrated, to have them drop their weapons. You also remember the Niger Delta militants, how they even engage their leaders. So as far as people are concerned, they are interested in solutions. So what's the lesson here for us in getting people who are abducted out? Kaede, uh, the lesson here is for the federal government to be very careful in negotiation. Negotiation, uh, is a systematic uh, game when it comes to national security. Here in Nigeria, at any given time, we want to negotiate. Uh, when uh, somebody slapped uh, the governor's daughter, uh, we want to negotiate. When a uh, kidnapper kidnaps some group of people, you want to negotiate. Negotiation is systematic. You don't negotiate anything that has that puts human life at risk. If some group of criminal elements are uh, out there to kill Nigerians, you eliminate that threat. Do not negotiate it. Don't give room for negotiation. When you give room for negotiation, you are going to create an avenue for future reoccurrences. Now, you make mention of the Niger Delta. Those guys were fighting for uh, a cause uh, within their region that they were being uh, 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 maltreated or uh, cheated from their natural resources. Okay, the federal government came in and negotiated with those guys. You're talking about terrorism, Boko Haram, killing of Nigerians because of their Islamic ideology. What went wrong? The federal government still went ahead, negotiated with these guys. Now we have another group of uh, guys in the Northwest, and uh, you are calling them bandits. How will you call people bandits 
that captures Nigerians, that inflicts injuries on people, that kill people, you call them bandits. However, terrorism is terrorism. If you put the life of any person at risk, or you put someone into the state of fear, you are a terror. And if you are a terror, you are a terrorist. And if you are a terrorist, you Dixon. are practicing terrorism. Dixon. So the bandits in the Northwest, they are not bandits. They are terrorists. Dixon, are you Dixon. I, I, I'm feeling you. I totally feel you. But just for record, and for the purpose of the people who are listening, when I know there are lesser evils, and I totally agree with you, but should anybody carry weapons that is not licensed, whether it's from Niger, Delta, are we not talking about people who also kidnap people? Shouldn't we call evil evil irrespective of uh, the nature? It comes. Evil is evil, whatever the case may be. Uh, because you cannot use illegality to fight legality. Even when you watch uh, uh, the incident in uh, uh, Niger Delta in the early days, I'm from Niger Delta, uh, most of those guys, they, they pick up arms, which is illegality. And the federal government went into negotiation. And uh, the reason why the federal government went into negotiation was to bring peace back to that uh, society. Now, going to the Northeast, the federal government also went into negotiation. Now, these were the fundamental errors of leadership. And that is why our leaders need to come together as one to ensure that they lead us with truthfulness, they lead us with all honesty. Last week, I think uh, the House of Assembly invited uh, the president. I knew the president would not go. They should all invite themselves. Every one of them are guilty. In the last general election, I saw how they used Nigerians to go and be stealing ballot boxes. I saw how they used Nigerians to fight Nigerians. In the last NSAC, we saw how some group of criminal elements were being uh, used to go and uh, mess up some peaceful protests. These are people that are watching the state. When you use criminal elements to carry out your, uh, your objective, definitely those criminal elements will come back and rise against I the state. I totally agree. That is the problem we're looking at Thank you so much. I, I think your point is well driven home. But let me quickly get the last comment from Mika Odubaki. Now, our fear is how do we avert this kind of situation where people will just carry weapons and hold the state to ransom? Why would I agree that there is failure of leadership across party lines? How do we ensure safety for innocent Nigerians who should have their freedom any time of the day? You call the market, please. Well, clearly, I think that we need a leadership that is focused on the protection of life and property of young citizens. Uh, like I said, what we have in today is a big embarrassment. Uh, because and we have seen that the little premium that has been placed on the lives of Nigerians, the present government has given the impression that even if it places more premium on the life of cows than the life of human beings, hmm. the human beings should be the center of our activity, government activities. Everything should be run around our human beings. We should give people place high premium on their lives. We must show. You saw the way Americans came here to rescue their citizens. What assurance are we giving to our citizens? We should, we must run a, a government, any government that we run, that's not about the protection of the lives of the of Nigerian citizens, is no government. That's a very, very strong one from you, Godumaki. You really have a lot of words to churn out today. Uh, thank you so much. I understand my time is up. Uh, Dixie Nosaje, a security expert, all the questions you posed, trust me, we'll make attempts to get answers to them from the, um, the, the security uh, agents that are in charge. We will hope that they will provide answers to them. And uh, Yinko Dumagin, thank you for also obliging our invitation. We quite appreciate thank your you. position. Thank you. And let me quickly take a breather and uh, when we come back I'll be giving you my take. Please don't go anywhere. Quite a complex case, I must admit. Just like some of the respondents on Lagos roads, what matters to the parents is the safe return of the boys. For the critics, why was there no red flag when the students were in custody of the kidnappers? 
What was uniform in their agitation is the seeming slow response in the rescue mission. So I asked, why don't we give credit to a result, especially with video and pictures evidence? evidence. But if the critics insist it was state managed and the government is culpable, it will not only be disappointing, it will be a symptom of a complete failed system. So I therefore advise that we shouldn't play politics with this rescue or release mission. However, our bigger worry is how do we avoid a reoccurrence in the future? I think that's a bigger issue we should stay on. And that's how far we can go on today's edition of Plus Politics. Plus Politics returns on Monday when we'll come up with another interesting package. Please stay safe. And it's time to say bye for now. I am Coyote Ladeinde.